Well, yesterday I was confused that we'd managed to score seven goals past Liverpool without any strikers. Today I'm even more confused because we've put seven past Chelsea without Nuhu. Hello and welcome to part 155 of Back in the Borough. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a massive league game away against Wolves and then our final group game in the Europa League at home against Lazio. It's the top of the table decider. We've already both qualified and we're top of the group, so we just have to not lose and we we finish top of the group, which would be absolutely marvellous. Since you were last with me, form has really picked up. We've had that bit of a blip against Norwich there, but if we pretend that didn't happen, everything is looking delightful. And it's looking delightful largely because of one man, Trong An Tuan, who is only on loan until the end of this season. I desperately want to get that loan extended. He was originally out of contract with Arsenal um, this summer, but they've actually given him a contract extension since he's made his England debut. And Arsenal are also getting a bit grumpy that I'm not playing him in his preferred position. But that's because I'm playing him as an attacking midfielder and he is destroying the Premier League. England debut done, Premier League player of the month done, and single-handedly disassembled Chelsea in a game where Nuhu didn't even come off the bench. But Twan gave us two goals, one assist, and multiple key passes, a 9.5. Jones got a hat-trick in that game as well. We just ripped them apart. Now, this isn't a typical Chelsea team. They are a Chelsea team down in the bottom half of the Premier League. But that's probably just a blip. I hope it's just a blip because then those seven goals become that bit more meaningful. What that means, of course, is we go into this game against Wolves with a little bit of, di of a dilemma because the dilemma is how do we get Nuhu back in the team? Because he's got his six-figure contract. He's the only player at the club on 100 grand plus a week. He's our key, he is a key player. He's a team leader. He's not had a bad season himself. Seven goals from 10 games. He's actually got his 50th league goal for the club now, which... I don't quite see how that adds up to 50, but the notification definitely came. Perhaps it's just 50 of goal in total because he does score goals in other competitions as well. 13 plus 23 plus 10. Uh, I guess that's... I don't know. I don't understand mathematics. Um, but my, my decision is we play him as the deep line playmaker. We try and use him to solve the midfield problem that we signed Twan to solve. But in actual fact, Twan has been brilliant there, even though it annoys Thomas Rizicki, the Arsenal manager. So this is our team today. The injury crisis is slowly losing its sting. We have lost Vujicic again. It's the second time this season he's had a spell out injured. Um, Sterling is injured as well. And Checo still not fit again from his long injury layoff. But Dennis Jensen is now fit and has scored some goals again. Not yet in the Premier League, but then he's not started a game in the Premier League either. He has started a couple of games in the Europa League and is scoring at a goal every game in the Europa League so he's becoming our Europa League man as he finds his way back to fitness but to be honest the strikers we've got are playing so well Jones and Kerr I don't really see how we get Jensen back into the team at the moment so this is our team for today's game we've got Oliveira in goal a back four of Joksimovic who becomes a homegrown at club player next summer I've just discovered. Um, so he's our left back. Coupler becomes homegrown at the club the following summer. And then Brodich and Ferguson in the middle. A midfield of Wanda, Nuhu and Hayes with Twan in behind. The aforementioned Kerr and Jones. After all that build-up, presumably we're now going to go and lose against Wolves because they're having a very, very good season. They're above us in the league. They're in even better form than we are. So, you know, away from home against a team in better form than we are. Never really bodes well for us. And I don't know... Have we... Have you seen us win a league game yet this season? We're having all these good performances when you lot aren't there, but you turn up look, watching over my shoulder. Having, oh, what's Kev up to? Let's have a little look what Kev's up to today. Oh, he's losing again, is he? And then you lot go on about your business, and I sit out here in my garage playing football manager in the dark in my pants, and we start winning games again. So, who knows? Um, but hopefully, we will... We will put on a performance today. What I want is you to see how good Twan is. We had little glimpses of it in yesterday's episode. Um, I could understand if you didn't make it through yesterday's episode, though, because the sound quality was so awful. Don't really know what happened there, but it should be better again today. But Twan had a couple of moments of brilliance in yesterday's episode, but the stuff I'm seeing him doing when I'm out here in my garage in my pants is... Is sensational. He look he looks better than Nuhu, which is why I'm favouring him in team selection at the moment ahead of Nuhu. Even though 
I might change my policy on that once we get to January. In January, first order of business when the January transfer window opens is to try and extend Twan's loan for another season. If we can't extend it, because we are, we tried to buy him and asked last for £200 million for him, which is a little bit steep for Nuneaton still at this stage. So we're not going to be able to sign him permanently. So We're certainly not going to be able to buy him. We're not going to be able to sign him on a three a three for at least a couple of years. So unless... Oh, what a goal from Kerr. Unless we can... Um, Unless we can extend his loan, he's only here for the rest of this season. And at that point, I'm not that bothered about continuing to develop him. This is his first season in the Premier League. He's been superb. But if we're not going to get the benefit of him next year, I'd rather keep progressing with Nuhu. Even though Nuhu has had the dreaded chat with me and told me he wants to join Man City. And I've had to promise him by the end of next season, we'll be in, we'll be in the Champions League. Vujicic has a promise that by the end of this season, we're in the Premier, Premier League. Nuhu is ended next season. But Champions League, not Premier League. But if we don't start pressing for Champions League qualification soon and um, we are going to start to see some of our superstars move on and we need to get a bit of a conveyor belt in place to have replacements coming through for them right jones hasn't played very well today so we're going to bring jensen on for him stick jensen into his preferred position as a complete or my preferred position for him as a complete forward he doesn't actually seem to like playing there and we're also going to bring on McAllister for Twan and get Nuhu up into his proper position. And this is the midfield three that absolutely tore Chelsea apart, Wanda, Hayes and McAllister. Um, so hopefully they can just take control of this game the way they did against Chelsea. McAllister is having the season of his career as well. I think he's closing in on double figures for goals, almost exclusively from central midfield as well. He's rarely playing as an attacking midfielder now because we've got Nuhu and Twan, Wagner, full French international, who can't sometimes struggles to even get on the bench. We are blessed with a lot of midfield talent. It wouldn't be the end of the world if Man City came in with a £100 million bid for Nuhu. But obviously we don't we don't want him to go. And we'd need silly money to let him go. Right, we're gonna take off Wanda, bring on Wagner, and because his name is Wagner, we're gonna play him as the deep line playmaker in the middle of a midfield three, because that has never failed me yet. Coupler with the throw finds or tries to find Kerr. Kerr quite, can't quite get there. Jensen just looks behind the pace in the Premier League at the moment. This is his fifth time he's come off the bench just to try and see if he's got any sharpness about him in the Premier League. And he just doesn't look like the same Dennis Jensen we had last season. It was a broken leg. It's not like he's done muscles or ligaments or something. It'll mean he will never be the same. As far as I'm concerned, broken leg, once the bone is healed... You should be the same player you were before. But Jensen at the moment doesn't seem to be. Needs to play himself into some form, which is why we're playing him in the Europa League games, to try and get that form into him. But as good as he's looking in the Europa League, admittedly, he's played against Limerick and Dynamo Kiev. He just doesn't look the same player in the Premier League yet. That was brilliant from Kerr. Finds Nuhu. See, where's Jensen? Why is he not up there? But he's there, just sort of strolling around at his own pace. Doesn't seem like the same goal threat we had before when he was our top scorer, and we have now conceded a late equaliser. We needed to we needed to score when we were controlling the game. We were mugging him. It's two 0 to Wolves on clear cut chances. Is that our skeleton? Is that? Forget watching this. Pause. Oh, it's Andrew Skelton. Can I look at you? No, this is why he never signed for me. He doesn't like me looking at him. We'll have a look at him after the game. He's actually made it to the Premier League finally. He's probably about 30 now and wouldn't get in our midfield anymore. We're too good for him. Who who do we drop out of our mid? Oh, look at him though. What a pass from Skelton. I say he wouldn't get into our midfield. That was just as good as I remember from him. Maybe, I wonder if we can pick him up cheap in January. And he could be them. I mean, remember, we've played Nuhu in central midfield today because we don't, we still don't really have a central midfield player. He's 31 years old. It is a little bit, a little bit late. But that shows how long it is since he was with us because he was a promising youngster when he was playing for us on loan from Man United. He's not quite as good as Jim McAllister, apparently. We have scouted him. Hmm. Look how long ago it was. We signed, we first signed Andrew Skelton 12 seasons ago. Where has the time gone? I don't understand. Right. I mean, a draw is fine. We would have taken a draw pre-match. Now we need to go and beat Lazio. 12 seasons since we signed Andrew Skelton. I don't understand. 
Right, I've made a couple of changes for the Lazio game. Then Kovacevic comes into the midfield with Nuhu dropping down to the bench again. Kulikov comes in at centre-back at the expense of Brodic, just really to get him some game time. Um, same principle behind the changes up front. Jensen, because we've been playing him in Europa League games to try and get him match fit and back in form. And Lazic, because he's played in all the Europa League games for us this season and has been really, really good. Uh, three goals from three starts. He's also come off the bench twice and just deserves to stay in the team and really do need to find a way to get Lazic into our Premier League squad in January. I'm not quite sure how I do that. I'm tempted to move Naguera out of the Premier League squad and maybe just try and move him on and bring Lazic, draft Lazic back into the Premier League squad as a replacement for him. But a um, little bit of transfer news as well. Um, Carascal has asked for a transfer because he's he wanted to get into the first team again. I said, well, no, obviously, we've got a couple of couplers better than you. Um, I've got no interest in dropping him and bringing you back into the team. You're going to have to accept you're a backup player. And he wasn't having any of it. He's asked for a transfer. He's still only 22, but has just about maxed out his potential already. And even if he fulfills the final half star of his potential, he won't be, he won't be as good as 19-year-old coupler already is. So it just seems it seems silly to to keep him around if he's going to get all fussy like that. We've got a wander who can play it right back if something ha- were to happen to Coupler and we can always try and bring in another young right back either in January or in the summer. Um, and with Carascal valued at 12 million quid at the moment, it seems to make sense to cash in on him as long as somebody can come in and pay his asking price. So he he's not on the transfer list, but I've offered him out for 12 million quid. No one's interested in yet. But we might see him move on in the January transfer window. Um, we've also identified another 18-year-old Serbian left back. Um, I know we've already got Joksimovic, but the idea of uh, the idea of being able to bring in more of these youngsters from Eastern Europe who can become homegrown at the club and help out with our European squads in the future. Because I don't think homegrown makes any difference in the Premier League. It literally is: Are you English or are you not English in the Premier League? We're allowed, I think. 17 players who are not English but the rest have to be English or gaps in the squad so the advantage of bringing him in young firstly they only need five years to become English and like similar to with Wanda who is Brazilian but because he has English citizenship he counts as an English player in our Premier League squad but in Europe he's not homegrown at the club or even homegrown in the nation because he didn't play. It's very complicated, all these eligibility rules. Um, but either way, if we sign an 18-year-old Serbian, three years later he's homegrown at the club, and another two years later he cla- he's classed as English for the Premier League squad. So thinking ahead for the future, if we bring in another 18-year-old youngster, we've only got Robinson on loan until the end of this season, so bringing in a young left-back who's already roughly as good as Robinson to be a backup to Joksimovic seems to make sense to me. Um, half-time, nil-nil. It's been it's been a total nothing game so far. Um, Jensen's first start against proper opposition in the shape of Lazio, who of course remember are managed by Ryan Giggs, and we did beat them two nil away at their place. Wanda lumps forward towards Jensen, but Jensen's nowhere near. I'm worried about Dennis Jensen. I don't know what I can do to get him back into form. I actually wonder on the topic of trying to get Lazic back into our Premier League squad. I don't want to lose Jensen properly. I don't want to sell him because of how good he was last year. I do wonder if maybe in January we send him out on loan somewhere for the rest of the season. If we've got Kerr and Jones, who were both playing well, and then we've got Naguera as a squad option, who was good earlier in the season, although just can't get in the team at the moment, and Lazic, who's been in very, very good form, then is there any reason to keep Jensen in the squad and trying to find little snippets of game time where we can... Give he, try and play him back into form or do we just move him out on loan, see how he gets on he might go and score 10 goals for a championship team or a lower half Premier League team and then we can look at him again in the summer or do, if we're thinking on that way already for a 26 year old, do we just cut our losses and bin him off it's all very complicated, but we've got half an hour left, we would like a break for obviously if it ends like this, then we are going to top the group, which will be absolutely smashing. Hayers with a shot from the edge of the area. What a goal from Hayers. And with 62 minutes on the clock, it's 1-0 to Eaton, And we have uh, we have one foot into a uh, seeded spot in the draw that will be coming up at the end of the episode. Lazic almost got onto it. And then Hayers, it was a beautiful finish from Hayers. Look at that. Lovely stuff.
Right, I am now thinking in terms of substitutions. Jensen, I'm worried. I'm worried about you, Dennis. I'm going to take him off, though. Get Kieran Kerr on. Um, and also bring New Who on for Twan, who's not had a very good game today. Um, Kerr is starting to play more and more often as a complete forward. The thing I like about both Kerr and Jones is they can both play in both of the roles that I like my strikers to play in. So there's more opportunity to get them into the team than with the likes of Lazic, Naguera, Jensen, who all have their very defined roles. That's why Kerr and Jones are playing so many more games than everyone else. A, they're in much better form and are just playing really well. But B, they can play in either role which is a pretty useful situation to find themselves in. Right, let's make a final substitution. And we're going to bring on Jim McAllister, and he can come on for Wanda and just shuffle the midfield around a little bit. Normally, I would have taken off Kovacevic in this, in this situation, but there doesn't seem to be much point. We're top of the group. Lazio have got to score twice in these last 10 minutes. We might as well just give Wander a 10-minute rest. Kovacevic isn't going to start the next league game. Playing a full 90 minutes against Lazio is going to do him the world of good with his development. And he's another one who is two years away from becoming homegrown at the club because we signed him aged 18 as well. He's still got five-star potential as well. So he could end up emerging as the extra midfield player that we need. And we've given him, similar to Lazic, he's had a lot of game time in the Europa League this season. It's actually been really useful for some of our youngsters who haven't been able to make it into the Premier League squad or don't play regularly in the Premier League. Because we qualified so early, we've really been able to play some rotated teams and get some game time for some of these younger players. And it's been a marvellous experience. Lazio equalised in the 91st minute. Hopefully... It's. I mean, I'd, I'd hate them to jump over us in the group now. That would make me very sad. But fingers crossed, we can just hold on for these last three minutes. Even if, even if they win, I think is European football is done on head to head. Is it? Is that how it works? So they actually have to score twice to jump ahead of us because we beat them two nil. And Kieran Kerr with an immediate reply. It's a beautiful header and just puts the cherry on top of the icing on the cake. We're going to finish our first European group stage in the history of our football club with six wins from six in a group that also contained Lazio. I think that's got to go down as a pretty decent performance from the Neat. And, and now we just need to see which, which of the big teams are going to find their way into the Europa League for the knockout rounds and see if the draw opens up for us the way it did in the FA Cup last year. Because... You know, we want to qualify for the Champions League. Winning the Europa League is a route towards doing that. But we're not going to mention winning the Europa League again until we're in the final in about four years. Uh, but let's jump ahead a few days and do that draw for the next round. There's danger on the horizon as we move into January. Wanda has a £52 million release clause for clubs in the Champions League and Barcelona are after him. Eee, we might have to... Might be time to offer him a new contract. We'll worry about that after the draw. Let's have a look at the draw. Um, so, who have we got in it? Uh, who are big clubs? I mean, Chelsea, we beat them 7-0. They're not a big club, are they? Inter and Milan. Um, I mean, to be honest. Roma. Tottenham, we've got nothing to fear from. Valencia. It's not the strongest... It's not the strongest... Um, Europa League knockout stage I've ever seen. I've just hit draw all teams. Um, and unbelievably, after Limerick in the first... How did Dundalk make it to the knockout rounds? What has happened to Irish football? This is insane. Um, but there you go then. We've got Dundalk in the first knockout round of the Europa League. We're going to win that this year, I've decided. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.